Tommy Caldwell was the bass player for the Marshall Tucker Band. He also sang harmony, wrote songs, and was the one to take the front mic and speak to the audience at their shows. But as you watch this video, you might come away thinking, maybe Tommy even meant more to the band than that. We're not taking anything away from the other five members. They all played important roles in creating one of the best acts in Southern rock music back in the 70s. But all bands need that one person to keep pushing and lead them on when the chips were down. And that person in the Marshall Tucker band just might have been Tommy Caldwell. Thomas Michael Caldwell was born on November 9th, 1949 in Spartanburg, South Carolina. He was the first of the Caldwell brothers to pick up a guitar and start to play. He picked up a chord here and there from his father who also strummed the six string. His older brother Toy wasn't far behind him when the music bug caught him too. Tommy would also play drums and later on was to switch over to the bass guitar. He picked up the bass when he was around 12. His first bass was said to be an old K single cutaway hollow body. Together, the Caldwell brothers would go around playing at dances and parties. While in high school, Toy decided he wanted to play in a rock and roll band. He joined the Ramblers, along with another guitar player named George McCorkle. But that didn't seem to last and soon Toy and Tommy started a group naming it the Toy Factory. Sometime after that, Tommy and Toy had a little brotherly disagreement and Tommy left and started to play bass in another group. That band also had George McCorkle and a drummer named Paul Riddle in it. Later on, Toy was to end up working out with both bands along with a vocalist named Doug Gray. But some of the band members would have to take leave as in the time between 1966 and 1970, Toy, Tommy, George McCorkle, and Doug Gray would all spend time in the armed forces. Tommy was the last to join in 1970. Tommy was an honor man of his platoon at Paris Island, but was medically discharged soon after graduation. So Tommy was back with the group, still named the Toy Factory in 1970. They were soon to change their name to the Marshall Tucker Band. Now the story of how the band came upon the name Marshall Tucker, I've covered before in another video I did a year or so back on Toy Caldwell. I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one and in the description box if you're interested in that information. So the band now consisting of Tommy, Toy, Doug Gray, George McCorkle, Paul Riddle, and Jerry Eubanks rented an old warehouse on Spring Street in downtown Spartanburg and got down to some serious rehearsing and working on original songs. From early on, Tommy, like his brother Toy, favored playing with his thumb for the most part. Back when many of the southern rock bassists favored the pick, Tommy was getting a great feel, tone, and speed out of his thumb. And that speed came in real handy on their live performances. Because when the Marshall Tucker Band played live, they kicked their songs up a notch or two. Once they released their first album, they were playing to large crowds, appearing a lot as the opening act for the Allman Brothers Band. Although Toy wrote a majority of the songs for the band, Tommy did write a few, and the two that I thought were very well written and from the heart was Melody Ann and Never Trust a Stranger. Now Melody Ann was the only song I know of that Tommy sang lead on. He wrote this song for his wife. The other song, Never Trust a Stranger, Tommy wrote for a couple of his friends who were sent to jail. That song is on the Carolina Dreams album. Now Melody Ann is on the Running Like the Wind album. Give these songs a listen and check out the words closely. Both are very well written. I guess one of my favorite songs by Marshall Tucker was Fire on the Mountain. Now it was written by rhythm guitarist George McCorkle. He pitched the song to Charlie Daniels, but by this time, the album, which was titled Fire on the Mountain, was already recorded and being mixed. So the Tucker boys just recorded it themselves and it became a big hit for them. It was always one of my favorites, along with 24 Hours at a Time. What were some of y'all's favorite songs by the Marshall Tucker Band? Leave some in the comments sections. The Marshall Tucker Band's self-titled debut album was released in 1973 
and certified gold in 1975, selling over a half million copies. All of the tracks were written by Tommy's brother Toy, including Can't You See. But in my opinion, they put a live version of Can't You See on their fourth studio album, Searching for a Rainbow. And that version of the song sounded the best, in my opinion. Also, I think the Marshall Tucker Band was one of the bands you almost had to see and hear live to really appreciate how good they really were. As I said earlier, the Tucker Boys kicked it up a notch live compared to their studio versions. Many of their up-tempo tunes were played with an even faster edge to them. The song 24 Hours at a Time is a good example of that. Tommy and drummer Paul Riddle kept the edge on it. And of course, Tommy does a great job on that bass solo. Between 1973 and 1980, the band would release 10 albums, with six going gold and one platinum, and in 1978 they would release a Greatest Hits album that would also go platinum. After recording the 10th album in 1980, Tommy Caldwell would die from injuries sustained in an accident where his off-road vehicle would hit a car in town. The oversized tires caused the vehicle to flip over on its side, and even though it had a roll cage and Tommy was wearing a seatbelt, his head would strike the pavement. This would happen on April 22, 1980. He was rushed to a hospital with severe head injuries, and he died a week later in Spartanburg General Hospital on April 28. He was 30 years old at the time of his death. The band released a 10th album, which was titled 10th, and it was the last album Tommy was to appear on. Until a live album released in 2006 titled Live on Long Island, which was recorded back on April 18, 1980, only a few days before Tommy's accident. They would release a few more albums after this, but they just didn't have the feel their earlier music did. After a solid 10 year run and a few unsuccessful albums in 1983, Toy Caldwell. Paul Riddle and George McCorkle left the band. Here's what many think happened. After Tommy's death, the Marshall Tucker Band was really considering calling it quits. The band had not only lost a brother and a friend, but they had also lost their number one cheerleader and businessman. Most people don't realize that Tommy was considered a leader in the band. After Tommy's death, it was his brother Toy's call, said drummer Paul Riddle. He felt very strongly that Tommy would want us to continue. The band decided to give it a go. They called in longtime friend Franklin Wilkie, who had played with them in the very early years, and they recorded the album Dedicated. A couple of albums later, they could see it wasn't just going to work. In June of 1984, Toy Caldwell George McCorkle and Paul Riddle all decided to call it quits. Doug Gray and Jerry Eubanks chose to carry on the Marshall Tucker Band. Doug Gray still carries on today, keeping the Marshall Tucker songs alive. Many feel, myself included, that Tommy was the glue that held that band together. He was a great bass player, wrote songs, and was a front man when it was needed to talk to the audience. He was loved and respected by his fellow bandmates. After his death, it just fell apart for the band. To lose such an important piece, musically and business-wise, they just couldn't seem to recover. On his grave, it reads, Devoted husband of Melody Ann Hope, composer and bass guitarist, founder and leader, Marshall Tucker Band, veteran United States Marine Corps. I think that word leader speaks very loud. Comment sections open for your thoughts on Tommy Caldwell. Thanks for watching.